Hello everybody, my name is Connor Vagel Bagel Vagel, and we are getting ready to get into game here against Northeastern as NIU and Northeastern are going ahead and uh, taking uh, each other on in this uh, League of Legends best of three. Uh, both teams coming into the match 1-0 and oh on the season. We are just about ready to jump into Champ Select and I am... Uh, Joined today by my casting partner for the day, as we are already into Champ Select, Michael Astorino. We will have him on the call in literally just a second here. Uh, but yeah, there we are. As we are now joined by Michael, and uh, yeah, and are you going to be on the blue side blue to start side us off? Hello, hello. We are in for an exciting one today against Northeastern. We're seeing Jana, first band here. Um, I'm not sure what Flying Hippo likes to play, but Jana's an interesting counter band. The Senna... Going over from the side of Northeastern, we have seen a lot of Senna from Soraqua, so that definitely feels a little bit targeted. Yeah, we yeah. have, and uh, there's the Jinx. That's Jinx going towards Days here, and Viego already taken off the board for PCH. Uh, so they definitely looked at what NIU played on Saturday, and they're targeting here. Uh, we did see as well that uh, Tomio up in the top lane did go ahead and play that new Janna top lane build uh, in one of the two games on Saturday, so that's probably where they're going with that one. Shen going to be taken off the board, another one that Tomio is very strong at in, uh, in kind of scouting him at different times. So we'll kind of see what that comes out to be here as uh, Northeastern will have one more ban uh, to start us off. They're going to take their time with this one, let the clock run all the way down to three seconds, and Jin is going to be the ban here. So oh. a lot of ADCs taken off the table here. Yeah, I think uh, that's actually rather interesting to see all these ADCs banned since um, ADCs this meta have been a little quiet. The Victor, first pick here, um, Victor, one of those great control mages that we see Jaded play all the time, so I'm not too surprised by that one. Yeah, definitely going to be able to play safe and uh, farm up here, and now Tomio just rolling through all the ADCs uh, that weren't banned since there were a number of them taken off the board. So let's go ahead and see what we are at with that. It is the Caitlyn Hover right now. That could be something very safe, especially if they think that Soraka might be looking to play the Zeri. Caitlyn very much going to counter that champion. Uh, but we could always see something like the Ash played into this. Uh, 
Akali going to be the hover here. That's been something that we've seen very strong in the top lane with some tank builds, also pretty strong in the mid lane. Um, it did get nerfed this morning, so we'll see if that ends up being what they go with. Instead, they are just going to roll through some more champions, now uh, hovering over the Ari, and that is a champion that was just got uh, mini reworked this morning. Uh, adding a number of dashes to her kit, so we'll see exactly how this all plays out. Um, the new Ari, to be completely honest, so new oh. I'm a little unfamiliar with some of the pieces of its kit, so we'll go ahead and uh, see how that all plays out. Still same ideas behind it, but definitely some changes there on the champion. And Ash, exactly what I was thinking might have come out into that, Caitlin. They're going to go ahead and pick up something safe for Soraqua here. There's that Ash. There's that Gwen. We see Steve play all the time. Steve plays a great Gwen, a great, uh, a great top carry pick. Um, and you know, like you mentioned earlier, we got a new patch this morning. We're seeing, we're gonna see some interesting things. Obviously, Zuri is live now. We've got, you know, the reworked Ari. We're gonna see. We see Gwen here. Uh, not Gwen. Sorry about that. Kiana. Um, Kiana, another one of those we've seen a lot this uh, season. Kiana, just a great assassin. You know, we still got Axiom Mark in the game. And I'll be really interested to see how this Kiana goes against this Victor, likely in the mid lane. Yeah, that's uh, likely going to be the... Well, actually, that's probably going to be a Kiana jungle, seeing as there is an Ari in this matchup. Uh, so that's going to be the mid laner, I'm yeah. guessing. I, You know, that caught me off guard for a second, too. Um, Graves now taken off the board. So definitely a carry assassin jungler there with the Kiana. Um, but uh, definitely trying to uh, limit the champ pool that we might see from PCH. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, turn uh, back and forth. The Gwen going unanswered. So NIU might be able to kind of pinch this top lane here if yep. they'd like to. There's the Galio to do just that, uh, kind of taking away all those top laners that might be able to negate some of uh, Gwen's magic damage. Um, so we'll see exactly how this all plays out. NIU, or sorry, Northeastern now looking to make their final ban. Uh, in this initial game of the best of three. Uh, will they go with another jungle ban? They are going to go with something a little more top and jungle focused. It's going to be the Jax. Uh, not quite sure where that is necessarily coming into play. Uh, not really something that PCH plays a whole lot. I, I have thought that the uh, item changes may have made it a little strong theory crafting with that. Uh, it hasn't necessarily seem to pan out with some of the win rates. Camille now going to be taken off the board. Uh, definitely two top laners that uh, that Steve Meister does not want to play into that Gwen. Or sorry, yeah. uh, does not want Gwen to play into. And there's the Lulu. So we are seeing the Aurelia. Could be here, but I would be surprised if... Um, if Tomio does not elect to go, okay, does go Fiora. So we'll go with the split pusher rather than that uh, support top laner. Uh, they will choose to respect Steve Meister on this one. So uh, we'll see how that matchup will play out, the Fiora, Fiora. Into, the, into the Gwen. Yeah, Fiora, one of those champions that, you know, is um, pretty close to a skill matchup into that Gwen, uh, both very duly. Um, and it'll just come down to see, you know, who knows their champions better. Um, and are you wait until the last, last second here. The Brawl, you know, we're seeing that safe, um, engagey bot lane here. Um, something to go with the Ash. And Udyr for PCH. Um, Udyr, one of those great bruisers. Yeah, Udyr now going to be taken off there. Uh, or sorry, not take it off the board, but put onto the board for NIU. Uh, as they do elect to go ahead with the Udyr. Um, and uh, we do see that uh, that is going to be the pick here for NIU, uh, something that we've seen PCH play quite a bit. And the Morgana for our last pick on the side of Northeastern. The Morgana, you know, a pretty decent pick. We've got that Spell Shield, hopefully keeping um, Ashes Stun down and some of these other CCs. Uh, Morgana obviously having a really strong root, keeping Udyr in place. Um, so I think we're in for a certainly interesting game today. Yeah, I think we are too. Uh, we should definitely be in for a good one here as uh, we do indeed get the confirmation that it is going to be Fiora, Kiana, Ari, Caitlin, and Morgana on the side of Northeastern. Uh, so that will be the order that they're played in. Uh, we do see Gwen, Udir, Victor, Ash, Rel for the side of NIU. Rel, also something that we've seen Cricks play quite a bit when the Top Kench or the... Um, or some of those more engage-heavy supports like Thresh aren't necessarily the right option, but 
rel another one of those engage heavy supports that can be played into something like a Morgana. So very interested to see how that's going to play out. We will go into that uh, three minute break here. So we did just get through the champ select time. They are jumping into game. We will be into game in just about two and a half minutes here. Uh, two minutes and 48 seconds, as you see. Um, we are working on those audio things, uh, so hopefully this is a little better than it was on Saturday. We're trying to get it quieted out a little bit, or evened out, I should say, the uh, the audio levels. So uh, let's see, you know, keep throwing it into chat if there's, you know, some adjustments we need to make as we go. Um, but yeah, so other things that we've got going on, other business to take care of before we jump into this very, uh, very... What, what do we call it? A close best of three, let's hopefully have. Um, but an exciting best of three is what I'd, I'd call it. Uh, we have going on uh, tomorrow, the Esports Career Lecture Series will be taking its second iteration of this year, as we're going to have Kat Tompkins, uh, who is a public relations lead at ASUS. Uh, she will be joining us. So if you haven't already, feel free to sign up on our website, and then uh, it is free to attend. You just need to sign up on our website for that. Additionally, going on on Saturday, NIU will be back in action in League of Legends against uh, Miami of Ohio. Uh, and then on Tuesday of next week, we'll have another uh, Overwatch match for you as Overwatch looks to uh, get uh, get on the board after a couple of uh, tough defeats. They they have showed some strength in those two str uh, matchups, uh, but they're hoping to get on the board there against uh, an opponent that I'm not quite sure who right at this moment. Hopefully we'll be able to post that up for you very shortly. But yeah, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, they'll be on the board as well. Um minute and 12 seconds left otherwise you can stop by the arena every day uh, some more business to take care of here but uh, stop by the arena for open play every day noon to 10. Uh, any students or staff with a valid one card will have access to the space during that time and can sign in and then uh, play on any of our open play pcs or our consoles they can check out so uh, lots of awesome stuff all right now that we've got all the business taken care of, Michael, what do you have? Uh, who, who's going to win this matchup, uh, and or what are the strengths of each team, I should say? Well, I'm certainly not one to pick favorites, and I don't like to call a game before it started. However, my eyes are certainly drawn to the bot lane of Northeastern. We're looking at that Caitlyn Morgana, which for the longest time has been one of those duos that's known for being really long range and really oppressive and really zoning. You've got Morgana's root, you've got Caitlyn's traps, you've got Morgana's, um, what is her, the earth, the tormented soil. Yes. Um, you've got these big zoning abilities, um, which into something like Rel, you know, I'm a little bit Caitlyn Morgana favored. I think they have more control over what Rel can engage on. Yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. However, I think that there is uh, some elements to this matchup that there's a kind of a double uh, stun element to the rel that uh, that way she can kind of use her two different forms of CC and kind of work through the black shield. So uh, we'll see exactly how this will play out, especially as rel will have the ability to uh, roam and can unlock in this lane pretty quickly. So we'll see if Crix is able to take advantage of just that. All right, let's jump on in to the... Uh, We'll go ahead and uh, do the splash screens for you for just a second so that you're not staring at a black screen for a minute. Uh, but we will be into game very shortly. And uh, it does look like pretty standard uh, summoner spells all the way across. We do see the cleanse coming out from Victor. Uh, double ignites for the sports in the bot lane. First strike for Victor, so uh, pretty standard um, masteries and summoner spells here. Uh, so let's go ahead and... That looks like somebody took just a minute to load in, so we will. Uh, we are in game, but we're just waiting uh, for the game to fully load in here, and then we will switch you guys over. So let's go ahead and. I must say, it's certainly quite interesting to see um, both uh, mid laners not taking teleport. It's pretty uh, weird to see not teleport on them uh, in at least today's uh, game. Yeah, it, it definitely is. We um, we have seen some teleports in the mid lane for a long time, and uh, to not have that, as you mentioned, is quite uh, quite different than usual. Um, I am, you know, I am seeing that we are on a bit of a black screen here, uh, so we are in game, but the game hasn't fully loaded. Uh, must have been that either there was an initial pause or somebody. Um, 
you know, uh, wasn't able to connect right away. So uh, we will be over the game very shortly. Hopefully we'll get an update very soon as to what has happened. Um, because I, I can confirm that we are seeing this on both of the spectators. So uh, this is not an isolated issue uh, to one of our computers. So I, I do apologize as we are hopefully going to jump into game in just a minute. Uh, it does give us a little bit more time to analyze some of these uh, runes and masteries, though, as or sorry, just runes. There's no masteries anymore um, <laughs> as we have that opportunity now. So uh, we do see that the... Um, we are going to have Gwen running the Conqueror into the Grasp of the Undying uh, Fiora up top. Uh, lethal Tempo on the Udyr compared to First Strike on Kiana. Uh, Kiana's First Strike not necessarily uh, the rune that I've necessarily seen her play very often, so I'm wondering if that might have been part of this potential pause or remake. Um, we are going to see Lethal Tempo on the Ash as well as the Caitlyn. Uh, I missed the mid lane first strike on the Victor, and we are seeing Ari for Alonus using that Electrocute. So very standard uh, runes at this point. Um, and then on the Rel, we're seeing the Aftershock um, and the uh, the Glacial Augment for Flying Hippo on that Morgana. Yeah, I mean, besides the um, Kiana taking first strike, which is the only thing we, I noticed as being a little bit different, I'd say these are pretty standard runes for these champions. Um, I think that we are in for a pretty... We're going to be in for a, definitely a spicy top lane game here uh, with the Ignite on the side of Gwen and the Conquer and uh, Grasping and Dying. So it's definitely going to be a very brawly top lane. Yeah, it certainly is. Um and yeah, we're not, uh, I'm not seeing anything quite yet about, uh, whether this is a pause or anything like that. Um, I may step over to, as we are in the arena, uh, I may step over to just, uh, check over the shoulders and see if this is something isolated to spectator and, or if it's something that, um, is a pause or anything. Uh, so Michael, I'm going to leave you to, uh, to kind of analyze, you know, the matchups and everything. And yeah. uh, we'll be right back with that. So, I mean, we are certainly in for an interesting one. As I mentioned, this Gwen Fiora top lane is going to be very brawly. We're going to see them on top of each other constantly. Um, Fiora not having the Ignite while the Gwen does will make it a, rather interesting because that gives Gwen a little bit more of that early damage um, and especially something that can counter this grasp and Fiora's healing. In the jungle, we're looking at an Udyr and a Kiana. Um, Kiana Jungle, one of those picks that we saw a bit last season, but something that's been kind of all over the place um, as to whether it's the good pick for her or not. Udyr Jungle, very standard. Um, Udyr, one of those champions that can just steamroll the jungle, can take camps. It's really hard for Kiana to walk up and contest an Udyr. Um, so I'm personally more Udyr favored in that. However, um, as we get into mid to late game, we see this Kiana and Kiana's ult, obviously one of those ults that is fight changing. You know, it can secure you a dragon, it can, start, can secure you a baron. So that's a very difficult thing uh, for the side of NIU to work around, uh, making sure that they have to play split. Um, here in the mid lane, Arya Victor, standard matchup. Um, haven't seen Arya too much, obviously this rework will change. But Victor, one of those control mages we see, we've seen for seasons on seasons playing mid. The cleanse uh, specifically to fight this roaming Morgana and Ari's charm, which, you know, makes sense. I think it's a safe play. And we look at the spot lane, we're seeing um, Ash Rel, which is, you know, a rather safe bot lane. Something that's going to just want to play to their own. Um, Ash, one of those champions that is a little bit available to play by themselves. Rel looking for those engages, looking to roam. And on the side of Northeastern, how we look in. All oh, right, and on the side of Northeastern, sorry about that. Um, we're seeing that Caitlyn, that Morgana, which is a super standard, super oppressive long range bot lane, um, very zony, very controlling, um, wants to just kind of stay in the bot lane, um, unlock Morgana, Caitlyn, really safe, and uh, I think you know we're certainly in for an interesting one. Um, I think we're going to see more of an early game. Okay, I am going to reload, but it looks like we may have gotten this fixed. 
Yeah, so, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So, we do have a game for you. Uh, so, it does look like Spectator did crash up until about the four-minute mark. So, we will be jumping in at the four-minute mark. It looks like before we were able to jump in, there were uh, two kills that went over towards the side of Northeastern. Uh, it looks like the Fiora got a kill on towards the... Um, on towards the Gwen, and uh, it looks like in an invade, uh, Kiana got the kill on the on uh, Siraqua's Ash here. So uh, we will jump into this one. Um, so once Michael is loaded on in, we will go ahead. All good. All right. So we're going to start at four minutes and three seconds right now, four minutes and five seconds. So I'm just kind of saying the time so that Michael can kind of line up with those times, 4.10 at this point. Um, but yeah, so there we go. And we will jump on over with you guys into game right now. All right, and uh, there we go. So we are, yep, there you go. You guys should see the game now. And uh, yeah, so we are just going to focus in on the bot lane here for this side of Northeastern with a little bit of a lead. Farm pretty even across both the teams here. Uh, so yeah, both bot laners did get an assist on that uh, on that early invade, it does look like. Now we do see PCH looking to, uh, to possibly come on down towards the bot lane and get a fight here. He doesn't know that there is a control ward in that bush though, so he would be stepping into vision if he was able to do that. Uh, first Drake is going to be, it looks like, the Hextech Drake, very likely. Uh, let's see if that is the case when it spawns here in just a couple seconds. Nope, it's Mountain, so it didn't show up quite right on the uh, on that corner for you. Um, it's not quite showing up right yet, so uh, it is just a bug here. But NIU going to go ahead and position on this one and real quick start that up. So they will get the early, uh, early Drake advantage here. But we do see that Northeastern is roaming up both Ari and Kiana towards the top lane here. Gwen going to have to back away from this one. Uh, able to get back there, but will kind of step into the charm from Alonis, and that is going to be the Ignite dropped, and yes, it is going to be a solo kill, though, as that is going on towards the Ari here. So NIU going to cross map that one. They will get, or sorry, Northeastern will cross map that one, and they will grab the early uh, the early three kill lead, while NIU does grab the early map objective uh, with that Drake in their pockets. It is pretty unfortunate for the side of NAU. Um, they did get the Drake, but we're looking at this Fiora in this top lane. Fiora, one of those champs that has just great ability to take objectives and turrets and split push. Um, we're looking at the the Fiora being one plate up. This Fiora has got a ton of gold on this Gwen and um, a whole level. So we're looking at a pretty rough top matchup at the start here. Yeah, and right now you guys can see the gold on your screens. Uh, yeah, just like Michael was saying, we do have, um, you can see that uh, Fiora already about 700 gold up on the Gwen um, with that early plate as well as the early kill to her name. Um, but we do see that uh, NIU now going to have the opportunity or the possibility of a dive. The charm does land from Alonis here. And now Mode Zero is here as well. So NIU not really having anything they can do with that. That's already the ultimate being used by the Kiana. That's going to be enough for one. One, and it is going to be the flash forward from Kiana, able to get the double kill. Now Gwen is going to be going on in on this Fiora. Udyr's here in the bot lane, and he probably is not going to want that fight. Days is going to get the kill, but NIU will be rotating Jaded. He'll be able to get the ultimate, and the heal is going to have to be used. Now, nice flash from Jaded, not going to be able to land anything out of that. Cleanses the charm, and is just able to, nope, not get out of that one as the auto attack does land. Looked like he was going to walk away, and now we do see Gwen going to die as well, and that's going to be a, the uh, five kills for nothing, so the cross map ace times out so that there isn't the ace, but NIU falling very far behind early on in this game. This is really unfortunate for the side of NAU. We are looking at a seven minute in game and it's, you know, eight on the side of Northeastern. We're looking at almost a 5,000 gold lead. Um, so this is this is a really unfortunate situation to find yourself in if you're NAU. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, I mean, they're just going to have to try to play for objectives, see if they can't uh, get back in this one. Unfortunate that they are they did have that dive. And we have seen with Alonis in the past that that is just something that he is able to do extremely well is rotate around the map and make those dives with Mode Zero. Uh, actually, Mode Zero, new to the team this year, or a name change. Uh, I don't recognize that name, but Coach Tomio, Alonis, uh, Days, Flying Hippo, 
Uh, definitely people that we recognize as being quite uh, quite strong foundationally for this Northeastern team. And they're showing it here with that uh, early executed dive on towards top and then followed up by immediate dive towards the bot lane. So Umbral Glaive already finished here for the side of Kiana. So that's going to be a very scary Fia uh, uh, Kiana in this game. A minute and 45 seconds left before uh, Infernal Drake spawns. So if there's sure. one consolation prize for NIU, it's that they won't have the Mountain Drake to have to contest against, and then they won't have the Infernal Soul here. Uh, as it does look like we might see an engage here from NIU. Uh, in fact, Flying Hippo does get back in time, so he is going to walk away, is NIU. But now that's going to be a nice dash away from the ultimate. Mode Zero not able to land it. Hiana and Udyr are fighting on this one, and Gwen going to be rotating back down. Nice flash in from uh, the Udyr. And this is with Jaded roaming in. That is going to be the stun coming in for the Hiana and the disengage so not much that comes out of that for the side of NIU. Not much. This is what I was saying um, earlier during champ select was if we are looking at this Udyr and Kiana it is so hard for Kiana to walk up and contest an Udyr even if Udyr is you know a whole level down. It really is and then that uh, that binding does just miss from the side of Northeastern Flying Hippo there. Not able to land the binding from the Mor Morgana. Now that's a nice trade in from Steve Meister on towards Tomio. So despite being down, NIU is looking to uh, potentially fight this one. So definitely playing the LPL style that they're used to where they, uh, despite being down, are just continuously looking for fights, trying to 50-50 until they potentially get one back. Now, Udyr going to take the fight against the Kiana. Does see that Tomio is going to be able to roam away. Now, that is Ignite used by the uh, by the Gwen. Not able to land that there as uh, using the Snip Snip was a little bit deadly for her as Fiora was able to dash to the other side and dodge out of that ability. So 10 nothing in favor of Northeastern. Yeah, it is really unfortunate. We, we're seeing the NIU make these, you know, decent plays and take these one-on-one -on -one trades, and they're doing all right. But in the overall grand scheme of the team fight, it's just really hard for NIU to take the lead and win the team fight because of how far they are behind. Um, in gold, we're looking at almost a 6,000 difference in gold at 10 minutes, which is, you know, a massive lead for the side of Northeastern. It really is. I mean, there's already four plates taken on the bot lane. There's one taken in the mid, one on the top lane. NIU has no plates to their favor, though. NIU is going to go ahead and start up this Drake, so they are going to go ahead and get the uh, objective focus here. Are, Waited. Response here from Northeastern, though. Yeah, nice flash. That's going to be enough, and flash comes through. Is the dragon going to help? It is indeed, so NIU is going to be able to get one. The uh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to land on the daze. NIU going to roam up Sirakwa here, but Mode Zero going to be able to get the stun flash comes through from Sirakwa. The heal comes Victor out, though. That's going to be enough. Victor's going to get that. Now, Flying Hippo is going to land the chains. That is Chains of Corruption. Or, sorry, that it would be uh, Varus. And now, NIU able to find one. They will have to get this next one. Mode Zero going to be out of the way here. Is this enough, though? NIU going to be able to grab that one with the Victor. And now, NIU will take three for one in that trade and potentially the Drake, as Flying Hippo is still here. Now going to use the binding on towards actually doesn't land as uh, the, the recall did go through for NIU. And uh, we'll see NIU going ahead and just continuing on with this trade. Steve Meister falling even further behind here, but did get an assist on that one. Nice snip snip, and that's going to be the ultimate from the Fiora. Going to be forced to uh, get away from that one as under turret, but nice flash and healing off of her yeah. ultimate. So a really nice solo kill there from Tomio, but really not much that Gwen can do when she's down 0 and 4 at this point. And uh, now four kills to, or 4 and 0 is this Fiora. I will say, though, that last team fight definitely did a lot for the side of the NIU, turning that almost 6,000 gold difference into 4,000, getting that shutdown gold on both the Ari and the Kiana were huge for the side of NIU. So I think we might see a little bit more of a balance. We're seeing an engage from the Rel here on the Ari. Ari able to dash away and get out fine. Yeah, I mean, and you saw in the bot lane, uh, we did see the Ash just fall to the uh, Caitlyn Morgana combo. Uh, not really much that she could do at that point, just kind of dove under turret. Now that's going to be a nice defensive flash from Jaded, forced out here by Mode Zero. Flying Hippo is going to be here, though, standing on Vision, not not realizing that she is, but that's going to be the Black Shield, so Udyr had to back away and immediately engaged back upon by Mode Zero and Days, and that's going to be the kill going over towards the side of Northeastern. And the, the Rift Herald, yep, 
the mid tower gold goes down. That's going to be Rift Herald used, and that could potentially be two full turrets on this one. Nicely done by Victor. Just to clear out some of it, but it won't really matter as that's going to be the dive coming through from mode zero. Kiana forcing the stopwatch from Cricks on the rel here. He's going to fall as well, and that'll be two turrets as well as two kills going over towards Northeastern. And just as quickly as we said that NIU might have made a proactive play that could get them back in this game, they go ahead and uh, they fall to the side of Northeastern and now are down even further in gold. 10,000 at 14 minutes. This game is looking more and more like a quick Northeastern win, but we'll see if they're able to uh, come back. And I you to at least stall it out for a little bit. That's going to be the Kiana picking up the Drake. So it will be Cloud Soul on this map, and we will see that uh, that's going to be PCH walking over a ward, and he's just going to run at him, pulling the Jarvin, or the uh, Zin Zhao strategy here. Tomio actually doing his taunt there, so NIU will walk away. PCH now going to be caught out by the charm on the on Alonis. Nice flash, but not going to be enough as the uh, ultimate did mean that despite that, Tomio was able to hit the vital, and now Alonis has the dash available to himself. Does have the, uh, the charm as well. Alonis is going to grab the kill on to Steve Meister there, and uh, NIU going to be bled out even further here. 18-3, to 15 minutes into this game. Northeastern's uh, going to take this top turret here. They are indeed. That's a 13,000 gold advantage already for Northeastern. And uh, likely there's a bit of playing with their food at this point. And uh, it is going to be NIU just going to oh, be forced the in the charm. The yeah, the charm into the root. Nothing that uh, PCH could do there was CC the entire duration. And now this is just going to be at 15 minutes. We see Northeastern already breaking one inhibitor turret and sieging down another. And NIU is going to try to just back away from this one, but not really much they can do to clear this wave. Uh, Victor, still behind on this one, uh, is going to now be Crix just getting bursted down. Uh, Victor only on that looks like the second hex core upgrade and uh, 72 stacks. So really not much he could do when he's so far behind as that. So... There is absolutely no mercy from the side of Northeastern in this game. They took their lead in those early fights and are rolling with it. We're just now seeing the, uh, I'm just now seeing the keep, uh, span the boat to keep NIU afloat, and that's what we need right now. I, I like it, chat. Keep that boat coming. We need this at this point as NIU is down in a, uh, we were hoping this might be a little closer than it was, and unfortunately it just isn't that. Um and are you doing their darndest to try to get back in this, but it isn't uh, seeming to work out right now, but they do have the, if there is one consolation, they do have three kills, they have the uh, the Mountain Drake to themselves, so they're, it's not a perfect game by any stretch. Um, Tomio teleporting bot lane, taking uh, an additional tower from the side of NAU, just furthering that gap in objectives. Yeah, and that is actually the new Maw of Melmordius, which is even stronger than it used to be, and that's now a full combo on from PCH. Now the heal does mean that he's not going to die quite as easily. Flash comes forward from Ari. That's a flash and three ultis, and uh, now another one with the reset. So that's going to be another dash forward. That is, I believe, I just saw Ari dash four times. No, actually, I think that was six times in the course of a minute which is absolutely ridiculous, but able to gap close. And uh, we'll be 24 to four, but this is gonna be the two Nexus turrets falling. Not really much NIU can do at this one, although that's gonna be the flash forward. Nice heal does come through though from days. Will mean that uh, that won't be the kill going over towards Jaded. NIU will possibly be able to get one if Flying Hippo does drop. They are gonna get one. Now that could be another with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. And now this is PCH chasing them down. Dash comes away from the side of days uh, as you had to use the, uh, that was the Gale Force there to be able to get away, and NIU will hold their base, at least at this point, with a 6 to 25 kill uh, difference. PCH getting very close to dying, but does have the Turtle Stance that if he needs it, and is just going to heal up from that one. NIU is just trying everything in their power to save this bleeding and to uh, maintain their Nexus. At, uh, healing up now was about half. Um, but one more good fight from the side of Northeastern, and we might be looking at an end of this game before 20 minutes. We're at 18 minutes now. We haven't even, Baron buff hasn't even come up yet, and we're about to, we're going to see this next dragon come up shortly, and we will see what Northeastern decides to prioritize here. 
Yeah, we yeah. are going to see that happen. It does look like uh, Northeastern does decide they want to just end this game at uh, in before 20 minutes. So we'll see if they're able to do just that. They are going to run on towards this mid lane. It is split push, though, as uh, they do have Ari and Caitlyn a little bit behind here. Uh, they will grab the red buff. Now, NIU going to have to hold no Nexus turrets to be able to do it. They are retreating to the fountain. We'll see if they're able to just uh, get a pick here. They are going to grab one with the laser. Not a kill, but some damage, I should say. And Shield cooldown is down, so they yeah, said they, as well. Yeah, they did grab the cooldown on Black Shield. Now, that is the first wave is going to get there. Charm lands Charm. on towards PCH. That's going to be the blow up of one. Now could be two as Jaded is going to drop as well. And that is going to be all she wrote. There's the, the dash in. Mode zero is going to stay alive even despite everything. And so that'll be a 28 to 6 first game for NIU to drop. Not and even 20 minutes. Not quite 20 minutes, but you know what? This is something that we have seen uh, from Northeastern, and one thing we failed to mention prior to the game is that Northeastern is potentially the strongest team in the conference. They are one of the top two. Uh, they look to be even better than they were last year, and this is a squad that last year made it to the top 32 nationally um, in the uh, College League of Legends championships. Uh, same with Buffalo. So those two schools are schools to look out for here in ESC. Uh, this was a school that we knew it was going to be a tough one for the side of NIU in, uh, in this one match, and so... Uh, hats off to them to keeping it closer than I think uh, than I think it could have been. Um, there were some things that NIU did well, some fights to build off of as we go into game two. So we'll be back in just a minute with game number two. And uh, yeah, exactly. We needed a dub to we needed to give them a dub to complete the reverse sweep. So we can't reverse sweep if we're not giving them that first win. We, so we it's gotta all give them a, a false sense of security, you know. Exactly. You we bust out. We gotta bust out all the Bilgewater champions to keep that boat afloat. It is, and uh, we've got Wolfie here saying it's about drive, it's about power, it's we stay hungry and we devour, and uh, I think we absolutely do. We go into game two and we look for that. On next game, we get the devour. Do we? You know, that's going to be the question. We'll have to see on that one. Also, uh, shout out to uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson on that song so that we don't get copyright striked on that one. That is his song, not mine by any stretch. And obviously, you guys know that. Uh, we'll jump into this one and... Uh, while we are getting set up for game number two, uh, it does look like NIU is electing to go towards the uh, towards the red side for this one. Um, so keep that in mind as we are about to get into champ select. But uh, we should be here in just a short bit as we go. Um, so we will jump on in towards. Oh, actually. Sorry. I was going to say, so if we're playing NIU, you know, for NIU, what are we banning this game? What are we not letting through? Are we getting rid of that Ari? Are we getting rid of that Fiora? Or are we going to stave the bleeding top lane and take something that might be able to face the Fiora? We see the Senna ban again from the side of Northeastern. That's predictable. Counter banning Soraka as uh, Senna's been, you know, her most played champion this, se this uh, season. Yeah, it, it is indeed, and uh, there's the Janna taken off the board once again by the side of NIU. Welcome to Alonis mid laner for the side of Northeastern. I see you jumping into the chat there and uh, and throwing in the oh no, we've got we've got the uh, the tricks going on, throwing in the spam this goo to help NIU. No, 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 we're spamming that goo to help NIU. Come on, guys. Uh, Azir gonna be taken off the board as well as the Jinx and Viego. And uh, yeah. we're having some fun here in the analyst desk uh, as we're, we're checking out this uh, this Twitch chat. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead. Caitlin now take it off the board by the side of NIU. Uh, and we'll see where they, where they Northeastern, who is on the blue side this time, want to go with this one as uh, they can first pick here. Are they going to go for something like a support top laner? That would be the very interesting choice. Uh, we have seen it quite a bit. I don't know that it's it hasn't yeah. lost prominence in this patch, so we could very well see something like that. But Jin gonna be the one that's hovered and taking it down to zero. But no, it's Akshan. Yeah. They're gonna go with Akshan here, and uh, will that go into the top lane or the ADC role or the mid lane? Who knows? But we're gonna see the man who revives his his allies. Uh, in this one, we got a spamming of the Kench. We want to unbench that Kench. Unbench the Kench. We are certainly in for an interesting game today. Uh, the Akshon is definitely going to be a fun pick. We'll see. Is Northeastern just going to go for a roam comp? 
We see that Ash again, uh, the other pick that Sorak was pretty comfortable with it. Rek'Sai! As we Rek'Sai. see the Rek'Sai. <laughs> Rek'Sai for PCH, you know, one of his classic picks. Would love to see the Rek'Sai on the side of NIU. Absolutely, as uh, Rek'Sai was something that they did pick up a win with on Saturday, uh, so they are going to go with that now. Jin is going to be finally locked in this time, so they will just wait that extra rotation and grab it up now for days, as there is a Fiddlesticks hover coming in from the side of Northeastern. A Ramus now, as they just w they want to play something that's just okay, and uh, that's going to be Ramus in this one. <laughs> as uh, Ari was doing damage, indeed she was, and we'll see. This Ramus is hovered for quite a long time. No, it's going to be the Camille. Camille and that was something that NIU definitely banned in the first rotation, or in the, uh, sorry, the uh, fourth rotation last time. So they will go ahead and uh, and make sure that that is secured for Coach Tomio there in the top lane. The Orn is what I was expecting here. Orn, a huge pick on Steve Meister. Orn, an okay pick into Camille. So I'm by no means surprised by that Orn pick, making sure to keep whoever they're playing in the mid lane and bot, or support role, I should say, secret. Yeah, and it's it's something that's a little safer with the Orn. Uh, we saw that that Gwen was really uh, bullied last game, so hopefully that Orn will be able to play a little safer and uh, hopefully not let them uh, scale so quickly on that blue. Morgana Band side of NAU and the Blitzcrank from the side of Northeastern. Blitzcrank, something I certainly would love to see. Um, unfortunately, we won't see a Blitzcrank this game, but that definitely would be a fun pick on the side of Kriegix. Yeah, we've seen Krix play that in the past. Uh, he does like his Blitzcrank. It doesn't necessarily always come out. It's kind of in certain situations. Uh, so we'll we'll see that one taken off the board, though, in this case. Hecarim going to be off the board from the side of NIU. They don't want to see Mode Zero playing that champion either. Uh, no Headless Horseman today. And that will be, uh, we'll see exactly where Northeastern wants to go with this one. As they currently have two Marksmen locked in, uh, they don't really have much of a magic damage at this point. So we'll see exactly where they want to go with that probably a mage in the mid lane could be that Ari again if they don't uh, ban it up this time could potentially see NIU pick it up in the fourth rotation as they go ahead and take away uh, Krix's rel here they want to see him on something different is this the time that we see them unbench the Kench it could very well uh, no it's going to be the cow they're going to see the cow locked in as they just want to get that buff cow into the match it is Alistair locked in here for the side of NIU uh, who are you going to see the Yumi Yumi and Jin obviously not awful not a bad combination uh, Yumi definitely has a lot to enable chin um however that does really limit the damage absorption on the side of northeastern it does indeed and that's why they're going to go ahead and lock in that leona instead something that also is engaged i think the the yumi is a interesting pick into uh or in that team comp uh where they do have a couple of marksmen already so it would have been a couple of different people that could be uh could be really buffed up but we'll see uh, exactly how this leona wants to play really wants to engage and uh, alistair will be trying to disengage and leona can really follow with uh with her zenith blade there now nidalee gonna be picked up i have seen some nidalee played over the course of this uh over the course of today uh, i'm wondering if the patch might have there, there wasn't anything necessarily specifically that seemed to uh seemed to work work well for Nidalee and that is an Ivern hover. I doubt we're going to get an Ivern. I, I don't think we're going to see a mid-Ivern. Ivern mid lane, this will be the greatest game of League of Legends ever. You know, we had, th there is the victor instead. I had heard uh, some rumblings in the in the walls that uh, potentially an Ivern mid as a secondary jungle and just uh, just power farming the Rek'Sai was an option. It does look like instead they are going to go with the victor and have another carry on the team. Uh, and yeah, there it is, exactly what we'd expected. Alonis will play that Akshan. Uh, Days will be on the Jin. Leona for Flying Hippo 2. Coach Tomio going to be on that Camille. Uh, Nidalee is going to be the jungler uh, of mode 0 here. And I then think the Nidalee... Oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, Nidalee grounds out that team comp. Definitely gives them a good magic damage jungler since they've got that AD top lane. And I think Nidalee's a great pick. Although, I do like, I do want to highlight that the side of Northeastern is rather squishy. We've got this Akshan, this Nidalee, and this Jin. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of squishy members here on the side of uh, Northeastern. NIU has quite a bit more tankiness. Uh, they are just going to play 
more than likely to get this victor farmed up as well as the ash uh so they definitely have a more straightforward team fight comp uh in this one uh we see the side of northeastern definitely having a pick comp there's a lot of speed and roaming ability in that team so we'll see exactly what and uh what this matchup ends up being if now you can survive until i'd say probably about 25 minutes they can start to scale into this one and they likely will take over the late game uh but that's going to be the uh, big modem of uh of whether they can do that or not will be whether they can survive during that time period. So yeah, my my biggest fear if I'm NIE right now is that uh, Akshan and you know Nidalee get one pick, get two picks, and then they just roam and they walk to that bot lane. And even with that Alistar, it still becomes really easy if you're Nidalee or an Akshan with a kill or two kills to just take out Ash. Ash is so squishy in that early game. So it'll be really interesting to see how Northeastern plays this roam comp versus NIE play the scaling. Yeah, it certainly is going to be interesting how that all plays out, uh, but we are now just about getting ready to jump on in. Uh, we're seeing a lot of the spams in the chat. Thank you guys for being so active in the chat. Uh, feel free to jump on in. Throw in your spams in the chat uh, if you'd like. Uh, anything, you know, uh, throw in what you uh, what you want to see in this matchup. Uh, NIU will be back, like I mentioned, uh, in League of Legends play on Saturday after this match is done. Uh, and We're not saying that this is going to be after this game. It could be a best of, you know, we could take it the full distance if NIU is able to hold on through this one. Um, but we will go ahead and have on uh, on Saturday, uh, we will have NIU versus Miami of Ohio. So another one of those tougher teams uh, in the conference. So I think by most people's uh, understandings of the power rankings for the conference, there are three teams that are very clearly the top three. That would be Buffalo, Miami, and Northeastern in a top tier of their own. Um, and then we, you know, the rest of the field is a little more muddied. So NIU uh, definitely got a couple of games that have their work cut out for them. We'll see if they're able to, uh, to hold on and pick up the upset on Saturday. Uh, so definitely stick with us for that one. We will have that live for you right here on twitch.tv slash NIU underscore esports. Uh, same thing in Overwatch. We will have that match live for you on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And then tomorrow at 6, uh, I want to say it's 6 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we will have the... Uh, the next career lecture series event. Uh, so feel free to join us. Sign up on our website at uh, Twitch, or sorry, at niu.edu slash esports. And that is a free event, like I mentioned before. And uh, feel free to sign up to attend. All right, we will be into game in just a second. We're going to jump on over here. Hopefully, we don't have any of those issues that persisted with the first game there. I don't think it's a spectator bug. I think it is simply a bug that was happening with that game in particular. Um, if so, we will be quickly jumping on over towards the uh, game here in just Let's a second. Let's take a moment to talk about summoner spells. Yeah. We're seeing the double ignite support on both sides. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. We're seeing these heavy engaged supports. We've got ignite on the side of Akshan. Akshan, one of those champions that doesn't need teleport because of his base mobility. We are seeing the teleport this game from Victor, hopefully able to respond to those Akshan roams. We're seeing, you know, standard summoner spells in the jungle. In top lane, however, we are seeing this unsealed spell book uh, teleport on the side of Steve Meister. And on the side of Camille, we're seeing teleport ignite grass. So we're seeing this Camille who's definitely looking to fight and take this Orn on. Yeah, and uh, we do see that the first Drake is going to be a, in Ocean, so that definitely favors the tankier team here with NIU, as they will have that regen to uh, kind of get themselves back up to that full health if they can get that first Drake. does look like and Northeastern is going to five stack on the top lane. I think that that might have been what happened in the last game because it looks like NIU is doing a counter five stack. They're going to go ahead and put five in the bot lane, and... Uh, it looks like neither team will find the other, so it does look like on the side of Northeastern, they're just going to go ahead and start to go up towards the red buff there for the side of NIU. We'll see if they stick around to get it. NIU going to go ahead and keep their bot lane in the bush here in case of any sort of uh, shenanigans. 
attacking, looking to go to their red buff. They are indeed. They will run right into an uh, Akshan, a Nidalee, and uh, the Camille here. If they do go for this, Rek'Sai running right into it, and now, oh no, even even throwing up the uh, emote. There's Flash used as well by Mode Zero. Flash as well by the side of Nidalee and uh, Akshan, but it will be first blood going over towards the Nidalee, able to land that final spear, and now... Are going behind Daze, we're looking at a heavy pick on the Ignite on the Jin. however, it looks like Jin might be able to get out of that skirmish. Um, the side of NAU down one kill now, which is really unfortunate, especially if you're a jungler. Thankfully, Rek'Sai is one of those junglers who can take a camp by himself, but as someone who, you know, played jungle back in the day, if you're a jungler and you don't get that first buff, it is brutal from the rest of the game. Yeah, it, it truly is, and uh, thank you guys for spamming the corn to help out Orn. I like that one. Uh, and uh, we do have do have the popcorn emote going on there. But yeah, uh, if it speeds up a little bit, we will have... Uh, I noticed that I paused it a little bit just to catch up with speed, and there's the Zenith Blade. Nicely done to headbutt away, though, by the Alistair here, as uh, Tomio now going to engage on towards Steve Meister. He will finally get two, though, so... Uh, it will be just in uh, just a chunk taken out of the Orn in the top lane. Uh, relatively safe pick here. He will have the ability to get his um, his ruby crystals very quickly in while in lane. Uh, Crick's going to go ahead and get forced out by the Leona of the bush there. And uh, so yeah, as I was mentioning, if there are some times where it speeds up a little bit in the lulls in action, we will get you caught up to live very quickly. Um, we're about I would say about five seconds behind, so it uh, shouldn't be too much that we need to do as we go ahead. Now, we see as there we go, you'll get to see the zoomed out version. Rek'Sai is down bot lane. Uh, despite being down a camp, uh, we do see that Rek'Sai is now back in there. Rek'Sai going to go ahead and engage here on towards the bot lane. That's a flash forward from Siraqua as well as Daze. And now you're going to look to grab one. Are they going to be able to get this kill on and towards I, Leona in time? That's a nice dodge on towards the nice flash comes through from Alistair. Now they're able to get one, now two as well as PCH is going to grab mode zero. And that is a two for one trade. And NIU has their first lead of the series. Yeah, NIU catching back up with a great fight bot lane. Even the Nidalee respond was not enough to guarantee uh, anything from the side of Northeastern on that fight. Um, obviously, now we're looking at. Jin and Leona having all their summoners down. Soraqua still has the heal, so we're looking at this advantage on the NIU bot lane. In the mid lane, we're looking at a bit of a skirmish with the Krigs working or rotating up. Looks like Akshan won't be able to get, uh, well, won't be picked there. Akshan, one of those champions that's kind of hard to engage on. Yeah, able to use the uh, grappling hook away on that one. Nice hex flash, though, did come through from the side of the uh, of Crix on that Alistair. He was able to fl uh, hex flash over the Raptor pit wall as there's Tomio going to engage on this one and able to dodge the uh, Nidalee spear, but will Steve Meister die to the ignite? It doesn't look like it, but nice flash to get away from the spear there, and that's going to be enough as now PCH is finding a potential pick, and Mode Zero is going to get slowed by the pillar, and that's enough! PCH is going to grab it as that is desperately misplayed the by the side of Northeastern, and they're going to pause that one. We'll see exactly why. Jungle lag is what they're calling. So they're going to go ahead and let the jungle catch up, and there is the unpause as they're going to call that uh, lag after that one. Both teams are ready, and now we are going to jump back into uh, the game. We'll see if we're able to get live as Crix is also in the top lane, and there is uh, oh, this is the stop for the pause. Okay, so... Yeah. We the pause is a little bit later here. This is a teleport in, so we will uh, let's see if we can't uh, get you guys. And yeah, it is live, so uh, let's see. Yep. So we are just waiting on the pause time. There it goes. Okay. And uh, yeah, they are going to be able to get that one, and that's going to be a third kill going over towards PCH as. The Crick's Roam was just enough to be able to unlock this, and now a 4-1 to one lead in favor of NIU. And this is uh, definitely the early game that they were looking for. ECH is here, is not here to play. PCH said, you want my red buff? I will show you my red buff. And PCH now 3-1, and one, huge lead over this in Italy right now. Yeah, Nidalee sitting on the Blasting Wand only uh, at this point. 
PCH going to go ahead and grab his uh, Krugs, and then likely, yep, there's the back in order to grab his items. So he'll end up being a little bit ahead, you would have to imagine, off of this uh, off of this one. And are you likely going to set up for this Drake very shortly? Steve Meister, if he's able to uh, continue to scale, scale, he can continue to... Uh, to just be a menace to this, uh, to this Camille, especially if he's able to get ultimate first, as that's a pretty even, uh, even matchup here. Lelonis is going to be able to grab the trade on up towards the victor, and uh, nicely done by Camille, able to stop the Orn from finishing up his item purchase. Um, but he will just back up a little further. He is uh, down a level here, so we will see that one go through, but he will be able to grab the second ruby crystal. Actually, he's going to grab the Kindle gem instead, so uh, make he decides that the more optimal uh, build right here is to grab the... Uh, Ability haste early on, and uh, nice trade as does force the uh, Camille to take a couple of turret shots, and now does have six available to himself. And are you going to elect to start the uh, start putting vision around this Drake? Uh, while Alistair looks to potentially gank his own lane with Rek'Sai coming in from behind. There's a Hex Flash over, is able to grab the one on the Flying Hippo. There's a nice headbutt, but not the Pulverize as that is the... Kill going over towards PCH. Now, Flash comes through from Nidalee. It's going to trade back, but Ash might be able to grab something here. We'll see if she's able to get out herself. Doesn't have Flash at this time. Nice dodge onto the abilities. We'll see if she's able to get out, and indeed she is. Sarakwa, really nicely played. So a one-for-one one jungler for support. Uh, NIU is going to take the uh, get the one there, but if you're Northeastern, you take the jungle kill uh, and shut down rather than the, uh, the kill on towards... Oh, uh, nicely done by Jaded. Looks like he is going to survive, too. The tick of the Ignite doesn't do anything. Nidalee coming. is coming. Is he going to be able to get out? No mana, but it's going to walk away. Alistair going to be able to dodge this one, and uh, really nicely done. Mode 0 not going to get there in time, and NIU is going to be able to grab the kill on towards the Akshan. Victor may be down in CS, but he's going to get the kill. That's going to be the Lost Chapter, Amp Tome, as well as uh, the Doran's Ring ready for him at this point. So, so one thing I want to mention, and we are talking a lot, NIU is definitely getting these picks. However, if we look at the gold, the gold difference really isn't that significant. It's about 300. If we're looking at the side of Northeastern, Northeastern has a CS lead in every lane, which is pretty massive in keeping them in this game and keeping their gold equal, even though they're down kills. Yeah, it really is, and uh, they're able to just continue to stay in their lanes. And are you electing to take less of the CS in order to roam around the map a little bit better? Um, in the bot lane, you'll notice that the Ash is down about 22 CS as well as, uh, and you can take out about 9 of that CS, so we'll see. Uh, that's a, a little bit over 20, so about a three-way of difference in favor of the Jin here. Um, but those three assists will keep that gold a little bit relatively even. And Rek'Sai going to go ahead and start up that Ocean Drake and get it herself. So PCH able to take that one really nicely done there to grab the early Drake solo. And NIU will have the objective lead as well as the kill lead here. Gold lead is still slightly in favor of Northeastern, uh, as you mentioned, Michael, a little bit earlier. This is, we are definitely looking at a different type of game this game. Last game at this point, Northeastern was, you know, eight pills ahead. And NIU is, NIU is not playing anymore. NIU definitely wants to hold their own in this game and see if they can take a win from, as an underdog. Yeah, they really are. But this looks like this is uh, Northeastern roaming four towards the bot lane as we see that Coach Tomio is going to take a nice trade against Steve Meister. He's going to just walk away though. But this is the Nidalee looking for the potential dive on as well as the Akshan. Rek'Sai is here if they can uh, get away from that one. Nicely Not done. Vision. Now NIU is going to roam down Victor as well. We'll see if they're able to grab this one. As there's the ult coming in, Tomio is able to grab the kill. That's going to be the Akshan able to grab the ultimate, but not able to grab much with it as the Victor fourth shot does come through. Behind. Now it will be a lot. Nice flash comes through from Alistair, and that's going to be NIU over yeah. or punishing the overcommitment. Really well done as they're able to grab the kill back. So cross map, it is a trade in favor of NIU, and they'll see if they can't do this. Akshan is just waiting near the... Uh, near the uh, wall there so that he's not in vision. 
but it will be just the one for nothing. Now, this could be the trade, as that is going to be the nice uh, laser back towards as you Coach Tomio's back will the be there. PCH nicely done, nice flash. Now going to be the ultimate coming in. He's going to be able to grab that one, and there it is. PCH is going to grab the kill on towards Days, and that's a nice trade on towards Flash Forward. Jaden is going to die because the shield comes through from Alonis, and just unfortunate. So, again, across map, Alistair is here. He's going to go ahead to the Hex Flash. Nicely done. There's going to be the headbutt pulverize. It's going to be the kill. Zenith Blade comes through from Leona, but that's not going to be enough. She's going to be stunned, and Crix is going to grab that kill. 2-0-4 on this Alistair, but this is a uh, this is a Nidalee that wants the kill on towards the cow, but not going to be able to grab it. Crix GG is going to get out on that one with the Moby Boots, and the Kindle Gem is able to get enough. Umbral Glaive is finished here for the side of the Rek'Sai. Now, he's going to be going on in. This is Teleport coming in, and the ultimate Call of the Forge God lands. It's going to be on towards Leona. That's going to be the kill. PCH is going to be 7-2-1 and one in on a killing spree. What and is this game, Potter? It, this is just what happens when you unlock PCH to play the way that he wants to play. He is a he is a go in jungler and this is exactly what you want to see. NIU gonna be able to grab the Rift Herald. This gold is slightly in favor of NIU for the first time this game as uh, they have about a 500 gold lead here. Now this is gonna be the Rift Herald is finished up. Alonis is gonna go ahead and just get some poke onto him. Rexite can use her ultimate if she wants to. Uh, it is not available. Sorry, uh, about a two second more cooldown. Now it's available. Um, but yeah, Umbral Glaive finished by the Rexai. This is a uh, <laughs> this is a full Moby Boots available. Uh, Alistair roaming around the map, unlocked to do what he wants. And uh, Orn may be falling behind to Coach Tomio, but uh, we'll see how this one plays out. As that's gonna be the the turret shots taken by Tomio and now going to continue to just take this fight and just try to trade back on towards Steve Meister. Does have the Divine Sunderer finished comparatively to the uh, just the components there for the Orn. All right, so I think we finally have a second to reset, and as I say that, the bot lane looks like it could be under pressure here from the side of Northeastern. Uh, instead, it will just be NIU pushing towards this Tomio, and they will be able to grab the uh, the trade there. And yeah, I think we finally have the uh, the uh, the time to just take a second and calm down. So why don't you tell me about what happened over the last couple of minutes? Because it has been a crazy couple of minutes. First round on Orn, uh, Orn finally getting his first item. Um, I will say... Now, that's a nice enchanted crystal arrow. Sorry to interrupt, but that's going to be enough, as that's going to be the days going down. Now, PCH is going to be just uh, bursted down by mode zero. Now, this is going to be the nice uh, the nice spear uh, block by Crix, GG. Sirakwa's going to die. Is it going to be enough? That's going to be the ultimate there as well. Elonis is going to go ahead and revive days with that one, but it will be the two for nothing. And now this Camille is going to be the Rome. Yep. As Camille is able to grab the full combo on towards the uh, Victor. Not much he could do when he's trapped inside the Hextech ultimatum there for the Camille. So right as I said that NIU finally had a gold lead, they're now down in... Um, they're now down in gold, about uh, about 2k here, 2.2k, and uh, that'll just continue as Alunus will be grabbing these plates. That is what I wanted to highlight before, um, you know, I the team fight interrupted. Um, NIU, well, they are, you know, winning a lot of these team comps, and they are up in kills. They're up uh, three kills. They're down 2,000 gold at this point, just because of how big these CS gaps are. We're looking at, uh, you know, a 20, 30 CS gap in the top lane. We're looking at a 10 CS gap in the bot lane, or the, in the jungle. 20 CS in the mid lane. We're looking at 30 CS in the bot lane, almost 40. So, you know, if you're the side of NIU, you're getting these picks, but you're lacking this objective control and you're lacking this real gold that you need to get those items to scale like you want to. Now, this is going to be, there is an Alistair finding the Camille there. It won't really lead to much, it doesn't look like, as he's just going to go ahead and clear out some of the vision. Rexai as Rexai though. is going to be in on this one. Now, that's going to be the the uh, hook shot hey, uh, having to be used there by Camille just to get out of that one. Uh, we do see that is the Gale Force finished for the Jin compared to just the uh, first couple components on the uh, on the shield bow there for I the Ash. I do note, Akshan also did just finish his Kraken Slayer. Yes, he does have his Kraken Slayer now. Uh, that is the um, the Crown of the Shattered Queen available for Victor as well, so we'll see exactly where this is. Steve Meister now at level 10, so he is getting 
very close to being able to get his own item upgrade. Uh, we'll see exactly when that does come in. He is going to have to get to 13 for that. Then he can start upgrading his teammates at 14. Uh, this looks like it could be a potential dive on towards the top lane as NIU going to miss that one, but they will just continue to go in. Now, this is going to be NIU backing off, however. Alistair, though, is going to go ahead and step over a ward, so he'll back away. And uh, this uh, swap from the side of NIU, we are seeing their bot lane going mid. We're seeing Victor and Akshan go in the bot lane. Um, it's not too surprising, at least by the state of the game, to see them change like this. Although, it is weird to have Akshan in the bot lane, because you do want him in the mid lane for those quick rotations. Yeah, you definitely want Akshan in the uh, in the mid lane. I think that the as this could be a potential pick, as this is a bait in for the side of Akshan. Now, that's going to be the kill, but Umberglaive comes through, so that's going to be a traded one for one. PCH is going to grab it, as they knew that he was there. He did step over a control ward, but it will be the trade kills at least, so... Uh, there is some value there for NIU. Flying Hippo going to be up in the top lane, so it does look like NIU will just elect to leave this turret in the uh, in the top lane. Now that's a headbutt pulverized combo. Now into the chest of Chris Lero. It will miss because of the flash. He'll going to be used by Daze as well. He will be out of range of the stun for the Alistair there, so there won't be anything to uh, continue with that one. NIU going to go ahead and just continue to push this forward. Now... Mode Zero is just going to have to go away. This is Curtain Call being used by the Jin as Mode Zero is going to grab the damage on towards Rek'Sai. Not able to grab anything there. That is going to be nice flash coming through from the side of NIU. It was Sorako having to use it, but able to get out of the ultimate there from Flying Hippo. Now, that is going to be... Positioning for the possible flank here. Yeah, there is the flank position. Now, NIU could potentially get the stun. Nice headbutt back in, but that's going to have to be the... Uh, stopwatch used, and I use Alonis will take a turret shot. That is going to be the ultimate there from the uh, Ukshan, and now NIU will just have to keep their members alive as uh, Rek'Sai has respawned. That is going to be the uh, spear missing from Nidalee, dodged uh, nicely behind the minion wave. And IU will just have to try to continue to clear out this mid wave as they do have Camille up in the top lane, continuing to put pressure on their tier 2 turret. Looks like coming in. Hopefully they'll be able to fight off and keep this mid tower. Nicely used. Call of the Forge got able to grab one. Now that's going to be PCH using his ultimate to be able to get over there. That's going to be the follow-up now as Alonis will go ahead and uh, actually get out of that one. Nice flash to get over the wall and it will be the revive on towards the Jin. And this is not how you want the fight to go if you're NIU. Flash does come through. Now Mode Zero is going to go ahead and grab that kill for the double kill. That's going to be the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Alonis is going to be shut down here by Sirakwa nicely done does have her uh her shield bow now ultimate comes through hook shot goes in nicely done to pulverize to make sure that that's not the kill going in towards the camille that is going to be the hex tech ultimatum though for the camille and uh she is going to be able to kill the shield bow uh ash here as the last member alive rena you will be the alistair of crick's gg and just as quickly as niu was up in kills they are now tied in kills hextech drake over towards the side of uh northeastern mountain drake gonna be the one that spawns here for the soul so things are looking northeastern's way but niu definitely keeping this game too very close compared to game one yeah absolutely um we're looking at you know a six thousand gold lead on the side of northeastern and besides cs one of the other reasons we're seeing this pretty big gold lead come out of northeastern um is because niu has so much of their gold on this rexi given rexi these big shutdown amounts and rexi you know being one of those champs that wants to dive in is getting picked and giving the shutdown gold over the side of northeastern and so that's one of the unfortunate situations because you want to see that gold we're looking at a skirmish here um. Yeah, and there's going to be Hookshot over the wall from Tomio. That is going to be the ultimate used as uh, there's... Sorry about that. It did slow out. But, yeah, we do have that going to be used by NI... Or by Northeastern, sorry. And they are going to grab this first Mountain Drake. Uh, they're just going to force off NIU by killing off the Alistair here. So... Uh, will be NIU just electing to back away, give over the Drake, and see if they can't continue to farm out some of these waves. Uh, 
We do see that Orn is level 11, so he's getting closer to some of those item upgrades. Uh, really we're needs those to come online, there. and now he's going to be caught up and uh, killed very quickly. Mode Zero is unstoppable here on that Nidalee, 6, 2, and 4. As there's Rek'Sai coming in over the wall, Umgrave is going to be enough to knock up here, but that is Hextech Ultimatum, able to grab one. That is going to be the kill bit going back over. Nicely done with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow to keep the Nidalee from being able to continue on and push forward, but NIU not really able to grab much more than that. That is a nice spear. Nicely done, though, with the Headbutt Pulverize from the Orn, uh, sorry, by the Alistair, not able to grab much more than that. Mode Zero is going to continue to push on forward here as we are uh, we are seeing this could be the push that Northeastern wants for the end. It is just going to be an Orn and an Ash versus the world here. They are going to elect to go ahead and back away is Northeastern. Up about 10,000 gold despite being only up four kills. But NIU, as you keep mentioning, not being able to keep up in the CS department. So... It is a very big lead in favor yeah, of Northeastern. Yeah, NIU just can't get those objectives. You know, they were winning these team fights early, but they weren't doing enough with those leads from those team fights. And now we're looking at Northeastern, you know, getting this control of the map, getting that mid and hib, and, you know, we might see them set up for Baron here. We're seeing Leona clear some vision, and they might look to take it the Baron objective. Yeah, it certainly looks like they might be setting up for that one, grabbing some of the vision around that Baron pit. Yeah, it's NIU is just looking to clear out some of this jungle camps, uh, or some of their jungle camps, as well as the, uh, the top lane there. Rek'Sai going to look for a pick on towards Alonis, is going to miss everything, though, so we'll just have to walk away from that one and actually could be potentially picked themselves. Going to be a flash coming forward from the side of uh, Rek'Sai to make sure that they get out. Teleports expelled by NIU. They are going to use the Call of the Forge God now. They're going to have to use that one on towards Alonis. That's going to be... The trade back. NIU does not have their jungler with them in this fight, but they are going to continue to use it. Now teleport comes teleport to in. Camille, and that is going to be enough. That NIU is going to have to just back away with the call or with the curtain call used by the Jin. Unfortunately, I was going to say at the start of the fight, you know, NIU was doing a really was in a great position there because we saw Leona use um, her ult. We saw Solar Flare be used, but now NIU had to expel all of their ults, and so we're looking at a pretty equal team fight here in terms of resources. Yeah, it is, and NIU now kind of being pressured under their own turret here as uh, we'll see if they're able to grab this one. They will elect to just try to get a flank position here from the Alistair. Uh, Victor having to back and make sure that the uh, Nexus turrets don't go down. And with that, Alistair is in a position to potentially flank. He is stepping on a ward, though. And are you going to have to engage in this fight very shortly? They do go ahead and uh, position the Alistair towards this. But now going to be able to grab the one on towards, on towards uh, Nidalee. This will be the stun, but able to dodge out of that one. Will be the kill going through. And shutdown goes on to the Ash. Now, NIU will uh, have one shutdown. That's going to be Orn able to grab the double stun. Hook shot back on towards Ash, and that's going to be a lot as NIU going to have to flash forward. Now that's Jin not going to be able to fall, but NIU will be able to grab one. Traded back as they do grab the Camille, who then took uh, down the Ash. Now, Flying Hippo is in a position. NIU might elect to chase on this one. Ukshan is chasing behind them. He is really but... low, though, so it is pretty risky of him. He is like indeed. He's just going to go to confirm this top tower. Yeah, he's just going to grab that top turret, and instead, NIU will have to elect to clear out those minions, make sure that they're not losing that one. Now, Daze is going to grab those raptors, and so oh. NIU will just walk away. Um, I, <laughs> uh, it looks like minions and turret did, in fact, pick off Akshan there at the end uh, for the execute. It did indeed look like that was the case, as uh, NIU will have to elect to trade one for the other. Will they go for this Baron, or will they go for the Drake? Uh, a Baron? In fact, actually, they have started to claw back some of this gold lead. Uh, it is down to about 8k at this point, 8.5. NIU going to go ahead and place the Vision around Baron, see if they can't get this. Uh, it does look like... The side of Northeastern might elect to do a split trade, and as uh, we mentioned... We do have an Orn that's level 13 now, so he does have his own personal Mythic upgrade. Uh, he's getting closer and closer to 14. If he's able to get that, you would imagine that the Umbral Glaive will be uh, will be upgraded here. Uh, the Evan Shroud is now the Equinox. That's a nice name for it. We'll see where that one goes very shortly. Uh, it does look like NIU is going to continue to just push towards this one. Flying Hippo looked like he was going to stick around and grab some vision on that Baron. 
NIU instead elects to, to get away from this one. That's going to be the Hextech ultimatum used by the Ash, or sorry, by the uh, Camille on towards Ash. Now going to be the trade back as Victor is able to yeah. grab one. Uh, Akshan is going to find a Rek'Sai here. Now Umber Glaive is used as well as the ultimate. That's going to be enough to grab one, and it will be the kill on towards uh, Rek'Sai from Alonis. Now nicely done to get away with his grappling hook, and uh, that is going to be... The continued chase from Steve Meister on this Orn. Is he going to be able to grab anything? Dragon's going to go over towards the oh. side of... Uh, Flash comes forward. Will it be enough? It will not be enough as that is going to be Ukshan getting away from this one. And Flying Hip Hippo that, is though. here. The that solar, solar flare, flare used. Now Leona? Flash forward from Leona as well as the... Uh, as well as okay. the Zenith Blade. Now that is going to be the trade back. Okay. That is going to be a Lonus... Going on a rampage, Mode Zero is going to grab Steve Meister, and that is four up in the top lane, and the teleport coming in from Camille, and that will be Baron for the side of Northeastern, as NIU is fighting valor uh, valiantly, not valorantly, uh, and they are also uh, having an opportunity here. Rek'Sai could elect to try to steal, not being able to do that. That's going to be Hookshot uh, and Hextech Ultimatum, and that should be a very dead Rek'Sai. Able to grab some damage back, but uh, not really much they can do once they have uh, the Hextech Ultimatum expelled as well as the Curtain Call, and Rek'Sai will just go uh, ahead and die. Connor's mind on the wrong Riot game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Uh, Northeastern is really pinching NAU further and further. Now they've got this Baron buff, they've got this gold lead, they've got the objectives, and they're on Soul Point which puts NIU in such an unfortunate position because they have to give up Seoul if Northeastern puts them in a bad position. And you never really want to give up Seoul, especially with a mountain here. Yeah, not really something that NIU wants to fight through the mountain Seoul uh, with that uh, shield that will be available to the side of Northeastern at that point. Especially that Rek'Sai, you know, getting that mountain break shield makes Rek'Sai so much less useful in this later game does indeed and that's going to be a route on towards Steve Meister as he is going to go ahead and just get out of the way of the Zenith Blade as well as PCH will dodge away from that uh, Nidalee Spear and there's a big chase on uh, with the ultimate from the victor not able to grab the kill on towards Alonis. Alonis is now going to actually nice Enchanted Crystal Arrow, Flash Forward, Umber Blade. That is going to be the big combo on towards the side of Northeastern from NIU. Coach Tomio will grab the inhibitor, but NIU is going to take this fight. They're going to grab one. They could potentially get two as they're going to shut down Flying Hippo as well as uh, they will take out Alonis. Now NIU going to have to walk away and make sure that this second inhib doesn't uh, doesn't die. They will grab the big damage, though, as now they are going to go ahead and uh, grab that one. Coach Tomio is going to slay uh, Steve Meister. Jaded is going to go very low. That's going to be the kill on towards the Rek'Sai as well. Crix GG is going to die as well. Sorak was going to be looking to try to kill. Day is not going to be able to grab that flash forward from Jin. That is going to be... Lane's pushing. It looks like this may be the end. Victor probably unable to hold off. Yeah, Coach Tomio going to be given not the, uh, yeah. oh, oh, shut down as they do dive the Nexus, or the uh, fountain for that one. Coach Tomio going to try to grab this kill if they can, and uh, nicely done. Now Jaded will give it over. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fountain there. There, he'll trade it back. So Days will go ahead and uh, finish off the game. 31-22, NIU is going to fall to Northeastern in game number two of this best of three. That'll be it. NIU will fall two to nothing in the series. That was a uh, nice game from NIU. They were able to get something back on it. Uh, however, it certainly uh, was a series that was Northeastern favored. Uh, we don't typically do... Uh, we don't do interviews after losses. It's just a policy of mine here. Uh, we let the players have their uh, have their uh, moment to uh, do some VOD review of the match. So uh, we thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we'll be back with an interview after a win on Saturday against Miami. NIU showing some things in this second game that uh, could really be uh, could be beneficial against an opponent like uh, Miami or some of the other opponents at ESC. They definitely stepped up the second game. You know, they weren't out of the game by 20 minutes, which was huge for them. They got all this gold on the Rex site, and they really had it going for them for quite a while. And I think if I'm NIU here, all NIU needs to really do is focus more into how to turn those team fights into gold leads, how to get those objectives out of them, how to get those straight plates. But overall, we saw a huge improve for NIU on this game than that first game. 
Yeah, it certainly was a very big improvement on that second game over the first. Um, actually, let me, uh, real quick, I forgot to uh, do this. So we will go ahead and opponent score. We'll put that up there, the scoreboard for you guys. So there you go. It is going to be Northeastern taking it 2 to nothing over the NIU Huskies. So in the Battle of the Huskies, uh, Northeastern wins in uh, on both Tuesday and Wednesday in clean sweeps. Uh, but not to say that any of the games were super uh, were super lopsided. Well, some of them were, but NIU put in a fight on some of them, and that is what matters here. Hopefully, uh, NIU can show can work on that over the course of the season. There's a lot of upside in this match, and uh, we'll see them back here on Saturday. Also on Saturday, uh, don't uh, don't miss it because we will have a special guest joining us on the broadcast. Uh, and I think I'm finally ready to announce it. Um, so we will be doing a TriCast, Michael, myself, and uh, we will be joined by the former, uh, one of the former players from your NIU Huskies. Uh, this is uh, one of our former varsity players, in fact, uh, a two-year letter earner. And he has, uh, he was one of the, uh, one of the staunch proponents of the team in the mid lane. If you haven't guessed by now, it is going to be Nathan Space Marine 18 Villanueva will be back with us and uh, saying, you know, doing some uh, good casting with us on Saturday. So hopefully you guys won't miss it. My, uh, his first match of uh, the cast. He'll be with us on Saturdays moving forward. Um, Wednesdays will stick with just Michael and myself, but uh, hopefully you guys won't miss it. Uh, otherwise, we will see you guys back here on the channel on Saturday for that game versus Miami of Ohio. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast. We, you know, unfortunate about the outcome, but uh, we will hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care. The weather is uh, a little bit snowy out there, a little bit cold, so stay safe. Uh, and then we will see you guys on Saturday. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching and have a good night.